Good evening, it's Aaron with Bowtie Treasures. How's everyone doing tonight? And I always enjoy coming on Dixie Bell's Facebook page and sharing projects and processes and techniques and just fun for you guys to enjoy and hopefully you get a chance to try. But tonight we are doing a little bit more of what we did last, uh, what was it, Tuesday? And that is more blending. But I also want to demonstrate using Dixie Bell's new transfers on this piece. And we did kind of a surprise box reveal. And I kind of let Dixie Bell's products that they sent me dictate what we do on this piece. So we used, uh, of the three transfers they sent me, uh, the one that we're going to go with is the uh, Steampunk transfer. And there are some colors on there that we decided to go with, some teal, some cream, orange, and then maybe later on I'll bring in some browns. So that's why the fun colors on this piece. And I've already applied some <clears throat> transfers on the back. Let me just show you where we are. And over here on the right, I've already started working on adding some transfers. And we'll do some more on this side. I'll demonstrate how I applied these transfers. But I thought first I would do a little bit of a blending. I, I have already blended these two panels because I wanted to apply some transfers tonight. It's always a good idea to let your paint dry overnight. You want to get as much of that moisture out uh, as possible. But I want to sh sh talk about how to blend again. I, 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 got, uh, I know a lot of you are trying to blend, want to blend, want to get better at blending, so we can't possibly blend too much, right? Tonight, as a review, we're going to be um, <clears throat> we're going to be blending first with sea glass. Get that on there. <clears throat> then we'll go into burlap. There you go. There's burlap, and then the last one, which is not a common common color, we'll be use terracotta as our orange again. Colors were all inspired by the transfer, and so I was kind of worried last night when I opened my my package from Dixie Bell because I really didn't know what I was getting. I knew the product type, but I didn't know what I was getting. So I took it upon me to accept the challenge of whatever's in there, I'm gonna run with it, and here we are. So I was pretty happy about that. Brushes, I, I'm gonna try and demonstrate if it'll work out for blending, uh, is the La Petite brush. And uh, I really, I haven't used this one, but a couple times, and I think this one, uh, the, big, the, the Big Dane brushes, uh, is something you, you could definitely try as well. There's a lot of ways to blend. I think it really comes down to the size of the piece, the types, how many colors, and um, just different things like that. And the other day we did a china cabinet with two one inch brushes because of the limited space. This one's another small piece, but I think uh, it would still be fun to demonstrate blending with some different brushes. So that's what we're gonna do tonight. Okay, basic process. I'm gonna have a Mr. Bottle handy. I also have a couple uh, damp uh, rags handy. I also have a bucket of water in case I need to, since I, if I can't get to the sink, of course, during my live. And we're just gonna jump right into it. I don't know that I'll be able to, or we'll take the time to uh, blend the whole piece. I'm gonna do as much as we can. Uh, that seems practical to give you a good idea of how to blend. And then we'll jump to the other side and work on the transfer. So I really hope that you stay tune to the end to see the transfer work. I'm really excited about that. Uh, Dixie Bell's got, uh, I believe, 13 different transfer designs. So this is just one of them that we're gonna be using. Just to give you a little bit of a uh, tip, since I'm using the eight ounce sizes, I can't really use the mini as well. So we will, um, I'm gonna continue with my one inch brush, but I'm gonna not use the one inch brush per se for all the blending. I do like to give it a quick mist and we're gonna charge right in there or in closer so you guys can have a better view of what's going on. It's gonna be fun doing the transfers because that's kind of tight work, but I'm gonna do my best to give you guys a really close up view of the transfer work and uh, let you experience it, that with me. Right now, there's no blending happening in this section. I'm just getting the chalk paint on there. If you want, you can go to my Bowtie Treasures Facebook account and watch last night's live. If you want to see how we uh, got to where we are today, and you can see the unboxing and all that. That was 
We had a good time last night. We were, I'm always usually live around uh, 9.30, 10 o'clock Central on Friday nights. One of the things I covered last night was a little bit about how much paint to put on your brush and uh, the blending. I'm, I'm demonstrating pretty much the same technique I did the other day with the China cabinet. But let's use the uh, the big the big brush here to show you. So I have a little bit of wet sea glass and a little bit of burlap. And I'm just gonna take this brush and swirl in between the two. I may not have had got enough paint between, but I, I think I did. And watch, you can watch that line fade, somewhat fade away. And it's really soft. It's one spot right here I think I need to get again. We'll just give it a quick mist. And here's where I would take my rag and just wipe that off a little bit. Because I, I don't want too much paint on my brush. But that's a quick blend of those two colors. Let's keep working our way down, okay? I'm gonna move it over a little bit. Since I'm doing three colors here, I'm gonna keep going with the same, uh, I'll have, I'll do three, just drip and paint there. I'll do three brushes as well. I mentioned last night that one of the things I liked, liked to do was to have a little bit of a curve to my blend. And I'll do that again too. And I, I'll also need to keep, for the orange terracotta, I'll use a, an oval small. And let me get that brush misted. Okay, so you see about right here, I have wet paint, wet paint, and about right there, there's no paint. So again, since I wiped this off, I'm just going to swirl around. This is not the only way to blend. Please know, know that there's so many ways, but this is just showcasing Dixie Belle's new brush and how nice that does. And you might get some areas where we just took off a little too much paint, just put some back. You don't have a, a large window of opportunity here, but appreciate you guys saying hi and that looks so, I feel like it's almost yummy ice cream. Uh, I had a spring theme last week, but this one kind of feels like spring transitioning to summer. So far I've used four brushes. Mainly I'm using one for blending and I'm keeping three brushes separate. So just to give you an idea, here is the difference with, you can see the brush strokes. I was doing a really rough, I wasn't really even blending last night. This was not wet when I did this color. But you can see now on the blended side how well uh, that's working. Let's, let's do it one more time on this side. The other thing that you get to de determine with your transfers sometimes is how far should you take it? Like the steampunk theme is, a, you know, it's got a little bit of fun and edge and character to it. So uh, I'll probably go back. I, I would like to do some shading, but we'll see. I haven't ruled that out yet, but there's a good chance that once I get this blend done, I get the transfers on, I might go back and continue to add some more character, but be sure that you are uh, following me on social media so that you can see their end result. It's gonna take a little longer on this piece than I normally do because I've gotta get the, all the transfers on, but transfers add so much value from a standpoint of cool transformation that it's worth the extra work. My, my turnstile 
keeps spinning on me, but. All right, so there's our two colors, just like we did the other side. And then we're just gonna, sp I wanted to say spin a win. Is that a show? I can't remember. Now, I demonstrated the other day with blending with two one inch brushes, and my comment was light hand. Well, this one, you're not being as light, but you also don't want to scrape the paint off. So somewhere between a light hand and uh, more of a keep it flat, keep it balanced. Just continuing the color here. I'm, I can tell I'm going to have to open the drawers up a little bit. I'm getting paint between them and I just haven't done that yet. Bring the paint in. Find my mini. Since the transfer work takes a little bit of time, I probably will go ahead and maybe we'll take the time. I always feel like the time is just flying by and it is, but Maybe we'll do a side and then we'll just go to the transfers. Because I, I definitely want you to see those if you haven't uh, had a chance to see those being demonstrated. Of course, you don't have to blend with three colors. Well, let me give it a quick mist. If it's not moving, your, your paint's not wet enough. So either you need to go back and put a little bit more paint down or you just need to give it a little bit of a mist so that the brush is so big that it grabs both areas and pulls them together really nicely. Remember, I do have the two colors underneath so it's not as much work to make that happen. I, I, I'm guessing you guys are asking about the top. And if that's the case, I am planning on staining the top. I'm not sure how or with what yet, but that is the plan. Okay, so those are two beautifully blended, at least I think they're beautifully blended fronts. Take a quick look. Really nice, soft. There should be no line in there. There's a little bit of weirdness happening right now, but I'm gonna let that dry and see what happens. But I think it, um, it's gonna work out well. And working really hard to get more videos on YouTube. So if, if you haven't checked out my videos there, I'd love for you to go ring that bell and follow me on YouTube. And uh, usually what I'll do is I'll take these videos like these lives and I'll trim them like a 40 minute video down to about 25 minutes so they're really more consolidated and cut right to the point. So if you like that and you want to bookmark it, then YouTube's a great resource. If you want to see me do something multiple times, different ways, different colors, just go back and watch those videos. Like blending, I'm sure I've done many a blending, but probably every time I do it, it's with different colors, different techniques. So right here on the end, I hit a spot that just felt sticky. That means there wasn't enough water there. It should not feel tight. It should not feel tough. It should be, feel should be able to slide that brush all the way along the line and it should be that easy okay hopefully that's coming through on the camera how nice and soft that blend is So nice. I would not, personally I don't think I would use this 
brush to go side to side. If you want to go side to side, then I'd probably use something like a mini, but that, that's going to look great. Right. Just like that. It looks um, a little bit more vivid on camera than it is here, but some of it's going to depend on which way I'm going with the, the, the lighting. But I'm very happy with that, and we'll put some great transfers on that. But I'll wait till tomorrow or the day after. We'll, we'll let that dry. But so the front should, and I didn't really even check, but got it pretty good you should want you want those things to line up and I mentioned on my live last week you know it's nice to have like a reference point you know, maybe the holes of the hardware and that's about what I did so you can see here is blended back there rough let's bring you in a little bit this is gonna be a little tricky to demonstrate because you can really get in get in the way I can really get in the way pretty quick so this is part two of tonight's live and that is transfers. So this is the steampunk transfer. And what you can do on these tubes is you can look on the back and it has, this one I think has six sheets, six sheets. So it's got two textures and then it's got four different miscellaneous ones. The beautiful thing about these transfers is that it comes with a lot of different pieces and you can use them on several projects and I'm going to gather. So for example, I have bits and pieces left over from what I did today. I can reuse this on this piece. Here's, here's the colors better. You can see the teal, a little bit of the orange, but it's got a bunch of different fun. That, and this guy, he's going to, I think he's going to make an appearance. I thought about putting him on the back, but I really don't even know the person who's going to buy this is going to display the back, so it could be kind of a waste, so we'll save them for the side. But I love how I have multiple pieces and all kinds of varieties. So the six sheets is really a great, to me it's a great value. There's those colors coming out, teal, brown, cream. So that's where the color inspiration came from. So I love the fact that I can chop this up, and that's what we're going to do a little bit. Or I'll probably do a lot of that off camera. And you can see that I put like the glasses here and the little flying weird machine there. And I cut up the transfer. It started like this. And I just tried to find a natural cut point and then just put them in the corners. It would have been nice if it fit just right, but not like they designed it around my desk. But that random cutout is really a nice, it kind of keeps it steampunk, you know what I mean? I have some scissors and all I'm gonna do, what I don't wanna do is copy the other side, but I, I think I like the idea of kind of um, mirroring. So on the right, then I wanna be on, on the left. And then I don't wanna copy the exact location. So let's, I'm gonna turn it so that the gears kind of show up in a different spot. And all I'm gonna do, first of all, what I, I want is I wanna get rid of the extra white, at least I do. And then I'm just going to look for a place that's kind of a kind of natural cut. So I think I'm going to take this little guy right here out. Ladies and gentlemen, there really is no, there's no wrong way to do this. This is whatever you want to do. Uh, so I'm just going to cut. The transfers come with a backing paper that keeps them protected a little bit. So while you're doing stuff like this, you can hold it. I always recommend that you at least read the instructions on the, the, the uh, product when you get it. But sometimes you're just going to find that you just need to use it. And you'll know. Like it talks about, for example, uh, on the instruction sheet about using taper transfers down to prevent it from moving while you apply it. That's great advice, but I would not say it's always required. So it might be depend on your techniques and what you're doing. Uh, I did not use tape and you won't see me use tape, but doesn't mean you shouldn't or sh if you're really worried about it. And the reason I say that is because the back is somewhat tacky and 
mine didn't move at all. But if you're concerned about that, by all means use tape. There we go, I'm trying to grab it. Oh, I'm off. All right, so that's what it looks like. See that foggy. All right. The other thing that I like, I wanted to do is make sure that I didn't put, I did not put my transfer totally in all the way in the corner because I need to get my, my transfer stick to touch it. So I, I have a little bit of gap up there. So there we go. See how it's just stuck? In fact, it's stuck so well, I found, found that I needed to get like a little little tool or maybe an X-Acto knife or something where you have a point. If you can't get your fingernail, I, I wouldn't want, it, want you to scratch your paint. Um, so I just got a little tool to get underneath there. Whatever works for you, okay, nothing. Uh, remember, I did let my paint, that I did this side last night and early this morning. I would recommend that you give your paint a good day to dry. Go with the philosophy that transfers don't like water and your paint, although dry to touch, still has moisture in it. So I do recommend that you let it cure at least, when I say cure, dry a day. What I did to get around that a little bit is I painted these two panels last uh, this morning and I put a fan on high on it for almost all day just to make sure I had a better chance of not being an issue. And it's, that concept should work. So if you want to try that, I guess, but do your best to make sure it's, it's had time to dry. What I just did just now was give it a general burn, uh, rub, just to overall give it a good start. It doesn't mean that I'm done. I can't just go and rip this off right now, okay? Now the next thing I want to do is go ahead and start finding a starting point. And sometimes it, it depends on how you're sitting. So if I'm high, I might want to go down. If I'm low, I'll go up. You do what, what works for you. And then the other thing is, if you're left-handed or right-handed, um, those are all factors that kind of play into this. So here I am, careful, 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 trying to get underneath. There we go. See how I, I got that. Now, I'm going to try to I really do want to get you guys super close, so let's see if I can, all right? That's about as close as I think I can get you without me getting in the way. All right, get back again. I have not top coated, I'll do that later after I get my piece done. So here's what I'm doing. I'm looking for the release. I'm looking for that little, when, when the transfer looks like it's no longer on the, paint, the plastic, there you go, that's the look you want. So I'm just giving it, I'm just almost keeping my finger in there as a courtesy in case I miss a spot. But, okay, that's, the, that's what you want. You wanna have this lifting when, when the transfer is kind of ghosted and gone. I could probably just keep going, but there are gonna be times where you missed it. You didn't quite get it the first time, so that's why I, I like to keep the stick handy. And I'm just looking for places that I may have missed. Just give it a light touch when that happens. All right. Use the corner, use the flat part, whatever works. And it might feel awkward to you. And if you get to the point you're like, man, I can't, I lost my leverage. We'll just try and go to a different spot of the transfer. Like maybe go back to the top. And I just need to get up here. This doesn't, where, where the transfer end doesn't have to be perfect, I cut it anyway, right? All right I can see that I'm going to burnish it with my, my... There we go. Now it's releasing. So we'll come from the top now. And so I mentioned earlier, we're doing great, that this takes a little long and it's not the most exciting video in the world, but 
for those of you who have not done a transfer before, it might be quite intriguing. It releases very, very well. You should not have to struggle. Now, part of my problem right now is that I'm, my hands are above my chest, so start losing blood flow. <laughs> I'm gonna stand, so I'm standing up now. But look how easy that is. I'm really not doing much effort right now. And my first rub that I did a while ago is what did most of the work. There it is. Now, earlier I was, I kind of liked a little bit of a distressed feel, so I, I have the Dixie Bell's finishing pad, or a, and I just gave it a little bit of a, get that off of there. Just gave it a little bit of light, I wouldn't call it distressing, but, okay. So that's, that's one transfer. Good to see you, Christy. Vaughn says the release is soothing. Amber's in love with them. Yeah, Christy, thanks for pointing out my uh, black fingernail. That's, it's the steampunk look. Yeah, I love that. I hit, I damaged that fingernail, I don't know few weeks back. It's gonna take a while to get that thing fixed, but I've been wearing a band-aid on it. I totally forgot. Okay, just to continue what we did on the right side, if you'll see over here, we put a little glass right there. So let's do that, because I think it's important for you to know or remember, not know, but maybe understand that it's totally fine to overlap the stencils, the transfers. So here's one of the pieces. That, and I'm going to take the back off. And I'm trying to not totally echo the other side, but let's put this one right, right there. I'm actually gonna cut this extra off so it'll lay flat my fancy scissors. As you can imagine, um, you can have a blast with these with different layering and this piece has so many possibilities for transfer so it's going to be fun and creative opportunity for me to find a place for them all. I'm not going to use them all but where I feel it's appropriate for the piece. Okay, so I've got my starter point. And just slightly pulling away from the P, from the back panel, looking for anything I may have missed. Just steady. We're not ripping it off like a Band-Aid off your finger, right? Nobody likes that feeling. Quick, effective. You're burning a couple calories doing this, so that's a win for everybody. Here it is. This is a cutout piece from the uh, that side. I think. So like how that looks, just gonna cut off the excess. And by excess, I mean just this extra white so I can get closer to the side. A little bit of... You don't have to sand to do transfers. I was just getting rid of a little nick on there. Okay. I think we'll just do that right there. Really isn't taking a long time, which is great. And I'm not really sure how the best way to do transfer demonstration without getting in close. So hope you guys are okay with that. Because if you can't see the action and hear the action, 
You hear the panel move, the panel's cracking. Just giving it a general rub. So if you need some therapeutic activity, transfers is your game, is, should be your game. And you gotta burn off that mocha cappuccino with three stacks of foam. Yeah, transfers. I made coffee right before I came live, so I'm not guilty, but I think you can relate to the coffee analogy, right? <laughs> I made an iced, I don't know, I guess it's an ice. I just make coffee over ice and put some foamed milk on it, so. Don't judge, because if Christy's here, she'd be judging me right now. That's, that's our game. Hope you guys bookmark my link that's in the project description. It always helps to uh, know that you guys are using that link when you order, of course. But as these new products come out, hope you jump on them, get them, see the full line of transfers and decoupage papers. I think I'm going to introduce, introduce a different, so the other panel, back to the transfers, had the glasses and the little flying, but I need to, I think I'll use a different part of the transfer set on this, down in the lower area, so I need to figure that out. Almost there. Had a little uh, piece right here. Not want to pay, play right, but I'm just going to see if I can take it off because it's not to be perfect. Good. I'm going to just give it a little bit of a push. And as I mentioned before, this, what I'll do next, I got a little piece right there. Totally optional, but I've. Oh, there, it gives it a little bit of a runs your feel and pushes it all down. That's how I'm rolling with it. Okay. So that's the vision of that. Let me see what we can do. There's some parts on here I haven't decided that I, I'm, I'm not totally sure I'm gonna use the boots or the car or the, the hat. Uh, I do like the gear element, so I think that's gonna play, uh, it's gonna make an appearance. It's got these really cool bees. And I think I'm gonna save those for the side and the front, but that's really neat too. But I think what I'm gonna do is, let's put, um, let's put this little vintage bicycle on there because it's got that car, uh, orange. And then I think we'll call it, call it a day. And you're just gonna to have to stay tuned for how this piece turns out, so be sure you're one, make sure you're following the Chalk Mineral Paint Group. Two, put me on the list. That would be awesome. All right. It looks really cool having the orange bicycle on the orange area. It's a good look. The next thing I'm gonna do is uh, sometime in the next few days is figure out how I want to do any additional grunging or steampunking to this thing. So stay tuned for that. That should be kind of cool to see what I come up with. A lot of it's going to depend on how the transfers work with what I want to add. So that will be a little bit of an experiment element to that too. All right. How to speed transfer. Sweet. That's cool. And the nice thing is there's so many transfer types that there's something for everybody. And, uh, 
or something for every piece. How about that? Well, now I've got my workout in for the day. I'm going to grab my coffee, sit back, go through the comments, see what you guys have been talking about and up to, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Thanks for watching tonight. Thanks for Dixie Bell for the opportunity. Hope this was helpful. Hope you learned something, especially about blending or applying transfers. Uh, make sure you're checking out my uh, social media accounts and uh, YouTube and all that good stuff. You know, the good stuff. Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a great one. That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.